so before we get going on this video, I gotta give a little bit of a uh, preface to why I'm having this different introduction here. There was a slight user operator error with the camera for this week and the audio got really messed up. So I'm going to be doing sort of a voiceover for the talking parts in this video. So it's going to be a little bit different than usual. At the end of the video I'll tell you what happened with all that but for now let's get on to this week's video. Alright folks welcome back. So last week we put up some studs and we also did a little bit of milling. And as you recall, we had a bit of an issue with the mill in the, the belts on here are getting kind of old, particularly the one that is on the follower wheel. Now the problem with that one is that it's kind of stretched a little bit, so there's some extra slack in there which was allowing the belt to pop off from the wheel. So last week I went ahead and ordered the new belts and then those things came in early this week. So we're gonna try getting those on today. Now even though we only had issues with the one on the follower wheel, uh, we're gonna go ahead and replace the one on the drive side as well because that's starting to show some signs of wear. Now if you follow along in the comments at all, you may have noticed a Mr. Brad Souter pop up from time to time. Now even though he has not had his mill quite as long as I have, I think I've had mine about six months longer, uh, he has milled considerably more lumber than I have. So he has already had to deal with replacing belts and whatnot. So I was talking with him earlier this morning and he was giving me some pointers with what to do and what not to do with replacing these belts. For the drive side, the belt size you want is a BX79. And for the follower side, you can actually pick between three different belts. One is the one that comes directly from Woodland. It has that same red color. The other options are your just generic V belts. And you can pick between two different sizes, a 56 or a 57. But of course the 56 fits much, much tighter than the 57 does. The 57 has a little bit of play in how it seats on there. So I decided to opt for the 56. Now when I was talking to Brad, he said, if you're gonna go with the 56, you're probably gonna need two people to get that thing on there. So uh, yeah, we aren't gonna do that. It's just gonna be me, myself, and I. Second of all, he said you're probably going to want to take it off the mill to work on it. Well, we're going to leave it on there because I don't have a vise or anything out here to clamp it into. So I think it might actually be better to leave it on there. So we're just going to totally disregard anything that he said and we're just going to do it our own way. Now as you can see here, this belt is pretty worn down. There used to be some grooves in here, and as you can kind of see, those are fairly well worn off, and it's really just time to replace this belt. Now I meant to bring out some big flathead screwdrivers to help with prying this belt back on, but true to form, uh, I forgot something when I came out, and that was the thing that I forgot for today. So all we've got to work with here are a couple of uh, chainsaw wrenches. And so we aren't going to have nearly as much leverage to help pry this thing on here, but it's what we got to work with, so we'll see how this goes. issue I did have with trying to get this belt on was that 
right when I was getting towards the end, last little bit to get popped on there, it was wanting to roll on me, so I actually ended up having to kind of pop it back off a little bit and then rework it on there. And then even once I did get it on, I still had to kind of roll the last little bit into the groove. Just like that, nothing to it. I don't know what he was talking about. Oh, you need two people. You gotta take it off the mill. Nah! One person left it on the mill, and I think it only took me like half an hour to replace this one belt. So it really wasn't too bad to replace. So now we're gonna move on to the drive belt. Now to replace the belt, all we have to do is loosen up uh, two bolts on each side of the engine. And then underneath here we have another bolt that you can loosen and that allows the engine to move side to side, which tightens or loosens your drive belt. Alright, so we've got that loosened up, so we should be able to pop this old belt off here pretty quick and get this new one on. So that does it for changing the belts on the mill. I think it took maybe an hour, hour and 15 minutes to switch both of them out. So it really wasn't all that bad. And I really thought it was going to be more difficult than this, especially for switching out that follower belt. I did have to adjust the tracking just a little bit because you got to keep in mind that when we put the new belt on that follower wheel, it added just about, you know, an an eighth of an inch to the radius or maybe a quarter inch or so total to the diameter of that wheel which is going to affect just a bit how that uh, whole wheel sets in there once it's tightened so I did have to adjust the tracking on that side just a bit but that only took maybe five or ten minutes alright so with our belts in place on the mill we can get back to doing some more work here on the mill house so what we're gonna do is trying to finish up the upper level here and if you recall from last week we've got one more stud on each side of this loading opening here and I couldn't quite reach up high enough to get those hooked in up at the top it was just a little bit too far to reach so I brought my piece of plywood over here and the ladder and we're gonna go ahead and get those two in and then we'll swing around over here to the other side and we've got three little short ones to get in up top over the spacer here that does it for our studs upstairs so that means that tomorrow we should be out here again and we can move to the lower level and try getting some of those done 
So first off today, we are going to get another little project going here real quick. And we're going to get this slab wood here moved out of the way. And then we're going to go over there. And we're going to grab that palette with the blue tarped object on it. already know what this is and I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it before but this is a wood stove and hopefully this is what is going to go up in the loft workshop area for heating that so I picked this thing up on like Craigslist Facebook marketplace something like that and I paid fifty dollars and the guy had gotten a new stove and I'm pretty sure he had bought this off from another guy and he was complaining that it didn't seal up tight, it leaked smoke, and I don't doubt it. Because as soon as I looked at it, I thought, well, there's your problem right there. Because on the doors, as you can see, the gasket was barely big enough to even fill up the groove on the door, let alone to seal the gap between the door and the stove itself. So I went out and spent another 20 bucks or so, a new gasket that was like three quarter inch, one inch, something like that, and some gasket cement to go with it. That way, it fills up that groove a whole lot better. And when you shut the door on it, it should squeeze together and seal up that gap. So we've got our gasket cement here. We'll squirt some of that in there. It has to set up for an hour. And then we can put the doors back on the stove, put a little fire in there, and that will cure the cement the rest of the way. While we wait for that to cure, let's get some of these studs knocked out. So our gasket cement has been curing for about an hour now. So let's go ahead and pop these doors back on the stove, get a little fire in there, and get those things cured up. So we got a nice fire going in the stove here, so we'll get these things cured. I guess I screwed around with this long enough, so let's get back to doing some studs. Okay, so we've got the studs in that are on the walls that go kind of around the sawmill. We didn't get them in along the back here. I think I spent too much time messing around with the stove. But I'll tell you what, it sure feels nice right now to be able to come over here and warm your hands up. 
The temperature has been dropping all day today and tomorrow it's supposed to be pretty chilly. So we're just about out of daylight here. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. And like I said last week, next week hopefully uh, we'll be able to get these lower studs wrapped up here. And maybe get to doing some more milling maybe, milling up some siding. But anyway, as always, I appreciate you guys watching, and I will see you next time. Okay, guys, so you made it through the video. What happened with the audio for this past week? Well, I've actually been having some issues with the camera ever since it took a little tumble off from the roof, and it's still been able to record all right, but it hasn't been quite functioning at 100%. So I recently picked up a camera off from eBay of the same model that was listed as for parts or repair and I was able to swap out the parts between the two cameras and get one camera that was working 100% and one camera that is not quite functioning. Now this new camera did not come with a little mic cover on it and this helps to keep uh, wind from making quite as much noise across your mic. And so I had to put one of those on it. Now these mic covers, to stick them on, they use these little round uh, sticky pieces that you can use to hook them to your camera. And when I put it on there, I managed to cover up uh, two of the holes that sound goes into for the camera. So in other words, the audio for this whole past week of video was really, really muffled. You could hardly hear it. So like I said at the start of the video, it was sort of a uh, operator error on my part with not paying attention to uh, where the stickum was located on the camera. But as you can tell, that is now fixed and our audio is restored. So hopefully next week we should be back to normal for our videos now that we've got this all uh, squared away. So once again, uh, as always, I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you next week.